Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Vital Conversations, Dialogues on Living and Dying Well. I'm your host, Kim Adams, and happy to be here with you tonight. Um, we are in for a real treat. Um, a number of you uh, wrote to me after the last webinar last month with Terry Daniel, who's the founder of the Afterlife Conference, and wanted more information and more conversation around mediumship and the afterlife. And so I was able to come through for you. And tonight we are I'm thrilled to have um, with us Austin Wells, who is a spiritual medium and a soul gardener. And that's a fantastic term, and I can't wait for us to dive into speaking more about that. So before we get into that, um, welcome to all of those that are joining us for the first time. And for those of you that are joining uh, again, happy to have you back. Just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, you'll see on the side, on the right-hand side of your screen is a chat function. Um, so actually go ahead and type in uh, where you're listening from, uh, watching us from. That's your way to engage with Austin and I tonight. So we, uh, you know, feel free to type in your questions and comments. And like I said, start right now and just say hi and um, let us know where you're listening in from. If for whatever reason your screen goes, freezes or the audio, you know, goes a little wonky, nine times out of 10, if you just refresh your browser, um, you'll be able to uh, come right back on. If for some reason it continues, this is being broadcast live on YouTube. And I put a little sticky note in the chat where you can go to that link and watch us live. And if you want to have questions or comments, just come back and just type them in there. Um, and I see people are starting to type in already. So welcome Cynthia from Tucson. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more folks um, that will be joining us. Um, so again, feel free to use the chat. Um, you know, the, for engagement tonight, questions, comments, it'll just make things a lot richer. Um, I'll be looking at the chat and, and um, sharing comments and questions with Austin as well as we continue our dialogue. So again, um, a big warm welcome. I, in addition to hosting these webinars, just for those of you that aren't familiar with me, I am an end of life guide. So I support people around end of life planning, specifically around advanced care planning, regardless of age, regardless of health status. Um, so just encouraging people to get their information and paperwork, and most importantly, having the conversation about what you want at the end of your life. So um, my website is yourendoflifeguide.com. And it's below my name, so you'll be able to see that. So I think that is it for the housekeeping things tonight. So let's get started and let me give a proper introduction to Austin it's by reading her bio. So Austin Wells is a spiritual medium and a soul gardener who empowers individuals to create soul-centered lives. She combines her mediumship with grief counseling, shamanism, and sacred ceremony and energy medicine. In 2012, psychic medium John Edward invited Austin to host her own show on his spiritual website, Infinite Quest. And in 2014, she was the guest medium for the California State Spiritualist Convention. In May 2016, next month, she will return for the third time as a guest medium and teacher at the Afterlife Awareness Conference in St. Louis, Missouri, here in the United States. And that's the conference that uh, Terry Daniel ha is the founder of. So we'll be also able to hear more from Austin about what she'll be teaching there in addition to the mediumship sessions. So additionally, she is returning to join the medium Robert Brown in Virginia Breach this coming June at the Robert Brown and Friends Mediumship Spiritual Retreat. Austin mentors mediums and intuitives in the US as well as works with individuals seeking to connect with the spirit world and live a soul-centered life. So welcome, Austin. Hello. <laughs> great to have you here. You know, there you're was such, such a, You're such a gracious hostess. Your housekeeping is fabulous. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, we had such a great turnout with our conversation with Terry Daniel last month that, you know, folks really said, hey, we want to hear more about this. So I'm thrilled that you know, on relatively short notice that you were available and that we could, um, you know, have these conversations. So, so let's, let's jump in, you know, as, as our friend Patty Burgess says, you know, from the death chicks, we just don't wake up one day and say, Hey, you know, I'm going to do death and dying. I'm going to be a, a, a medium. So how did you kind of get involved in this? Just give us a little background around that. 
I was blessed, Kim, uh, from the age of five to be aware of the spirit world. So I had an evening where I, my mom had asked me to be in a fashion show. I was a little shy as a child. I've kind of got out and over that a little bit. Um, but uh, I was really nervous about this fashion show and doing a good job. And my mom wasn't necessarily the kind of mom you wake up in the middle of the night and tell that you have a problem. So I knew I had to deal with it on my own. I was sitting in my bedroom about 2 o'clock in the morning, terrified about the next day. And I just prayed from the depths of my soul for support. And all of a sudden, all these people just started coming in from my walls. And I suppose in a normal situation, most people would be afraid, but I just wasn't at all. I was immediately comforted. This woman came up to my bed, and she said, what do you need? Now, when the, when the spirit world speaks in those kind of situations, it's heart to heart, so you clear it you clear audiently hear it you hear it within yourself mm. and I said I'm really nervous about tomorrow like I hope I do a good job so she sh my bedroom at that point split into two time zones and the right side of my room was the runway of the next day and so she showed me walking down the runway and being fine and then she showed me and made me feel what the audience felt toward me and then I became the energy of the entire room so I could see and sense and feel how supported I was. And once I knew I was okay, that kind of disappeared and I was fully back consciously in my body. And then she looked at me and she said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm good. And then she, everybody kind of dissipated. So I was aware of that as a kid, but I also was fabulously distracted by, you know, life. And so um, fortunately, my first boyfriend's mom was highly spiritual. And then she kind of got me back on track with intuition. And then a couple of years before my dad died is when the mediumship really came in full force. Wow. What a story. And, you know, as a small child to just really not be afraid. Yeah. Well, I, I have a bit of a childlike essence, and I lost it for a while. But the mm -hmm. spirit world, I think the beauty of connecting with the spirit world on a regular basis is they're so funny, and they're super playful. So you can't help but have a sense of something that gets returned to you that you – kids are just amazing. You look at a child, and they're just – effervescently exploring the world and I think I've gotten that piece back so I just I'm I just feel super grateful for my work and everything I do mm, mm, sounds wonderful so for yeah. those that you know may have heard stories or may not be really clear talk a little bit about what is mediumship and what what does maybe mediumship and how is that different from a psychic you know i i, mm. I sometimes people use those words interchangeably and clearly they're two very different things so maybe just kind of walk us through what mediumship is certainly and it also can get confusing because people will call them a psychic medium uh -huh. and then you're like what does that mean so a psychic is someone who connects to the soul of the person that is having the session with them and it ref primarily is an access to their soul this lifetime mm -hmm. so it's a two it's a soul to soul connection just within the room and i and i celebrate soul to soul because my wish for the integrity in my industry to be strong is um, I'm choosing words to elevate the fact that I'm hoping it's a soul to soul connection because there's other ways that you could work. But essentially you are connecting to the person's, everything about this lifetime, who they're connected with, who they love, what their challenges are. So it can be quite profound, very helpful. Um, and visionary, hopeful, if they're looking into the future for you with an, an idea of helping your soul expand. A medium, there's a third point. So you have the person with you, the person as the medium, and then a, per, a soul that's in the spirit world, i.e. someone who is out of physical form that is connected to the soul or has some deep need to connect to the soul that you're sitting with.
So the word medium is perfection. We are exactly that. We're like a translator, like one person speaks Spanish and one person speaks, speaks French, and we've got to kind of get the two of them together on the same page. That's great. So almost like yeah. you're a bridge, right? You're a bridge, the conduit between. Ah, exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Great. great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so in terms of, you know, we hear various way you know what's the are you do you hear do you sense do you see in terms of when you're working with someone and the soul that's passed the beauty of the work is is that it evolves uh -huh. um so to explain if people are really really basically new to that how the spirit world communicates is they impress their memory and experience upon the senses of the medium mm -hmm. so because they're a different kind of sensing, much like you would inhale what's in your room, when a soul is connecting to me that's in the spirit world, I will inhale something from their lifetime that's not resident within my environment. So those senses are called clairs, and it comes from the French word, which means clear. So there's clairsentient, which means clear feeling, clairaudient, which means clear hearing, clairvoyant, which means clear, clear seeing, clear knowing in a sense. And then there's um, um, other ones that are utilized as well that are for taste and for touch. So um, they make those impressions upon me. And then with the senses that I have, I bring through the messages. I essentially began as a clairsentient feeling only, but it's a little challenging to feel everything about a person's life. Mm -hmm. Seeing is a really, really helpful, make things go faster sense. So most of what happens, and I've this has come from teaching as well as from doing the work for quite a number of years now, is that most of the time there's more than one clear sense that's being used at the same time. And once a medium becomes more aware of their facilities, they will notice that they not only feel, but they hear at the same time, or they see and they they know at the same time. So it's um, you'll have a lead one, but they kind of dance together somehow, almost like DNA strands. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, you know, others speak about, you know, they have one that's stronger than the other, you know, they may hear things or they sense things or, so that's great. Kind of one, a leader, but that there's a lot of times, you know, a couple of them as well. Great. And well, you know, if you uh, think about your life experience though, we do capture things with our senses, not just hearing because you're also taking in the full environment. So mm -hmm. I think it speaks to the development of the medium, the more all of their senses are sensitized by a mm -hmm. single impression mm -hmm. because that's more like the actual living experience. Great, great. And for someone that's coming, you know, and says, Hey, I want to, you know, connect with, with, you know, a loved one that's passed or get some messages, you know, what, what do you suggest in terms of the motivation or the, you know, I, I've heard in the past, you know, sometimes people get, what's the word almost, they, they continue to need the validation, right? For that their loved one is okay. And almost like using a medium as a crutch. What, mm -hmm. what really would you say is kind of the, the reasons for people to really want to be using a medium? It's a really good question because I appreciate it coming from a different filter because most people wouldn't come, wouldn't start off a line of questions like that. So, and I mean that as a compliment to your field because the discernment piece should be imperative. So well done you, you get an extra cookie at the end. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, essentially when it depends kind of on the, the person that the, sitter is seeking to connect with mm. if most of the time it's to evidence the fact that there's something beyond the physical mm -hmm. and until someone has a death of someone that is extraordinarily important to them it may not even cross their soul mm -hmm. and the concept of their soul may not even be part of their living experience because that level of yearning hasn't presented itself when it does, people are drawn to ask all sorts of questions and question things that they have accepted as true before. Many times when someone is coming to me for the first time, it is 
they've heard about mediumship, they've seen it on television, and they think it might be fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one layer of it. And they may not have that many people in the spirit world, which is really fun for a medium, because then you've got to really be looking at the pets and the goldfish that they had along the way to keep the conversation going. You also have people that have had devastating losses and that their life literally cannot continue mm -hmm. if they don't have some sort of hope that there is some line of it gets me so choked up because these sessions i just the empathy i have for the people that are walking that line that mm -hmm. that soul journey mm -hmm. um the need is extraordinary mm -hmm. um but and then there's the gamut in between those two mm -hmm. wow wow it's powerful work it's really powerful work that you know that you do and you know for individuals kind of seeking that that comfort and i can imagine you know people think oh what i've seen on tv or like you said this might be fun all the way to the you know the folks that really say you know what i i need something i need some hope i need something um to just comfort me to know that you know as i said in the registration form you know love does not die when we pass into the spirit world and so you know i think we kind of moves a little bit into kind of the evolution of our soul right i mean that we're more than just this physical body here can you speak to that a little bit that's where the term soul gardener came in beautiful okay yeah because i had to be different as a person once i started being asked to do this so my life changed mm -hmm. i had to change once I was aware of so many messages from people about what they did not do while they were here, the regrets are such a huge component of sessions. Mm -hmm. And we have plenty of time. But we are nonchalant and human. God love us, but we are. So I had to ask myself what my priorities were. And although I've been really blessed within my lifetime, I had to ask myself, how was I working on myself? And where was, was I evolving? Because I noticed there was a dynamic relationship between my willingness to expand within my soul and the ability of the spirit world to work with me. Mm. And once I got the fact that my own evolution equaled what I was capable of perceiving, then I realized my homework had to come first. Mm. So I stepped into shamanism. I stepped into remote viewing. I stepped into so many different forms of this work to look within my soul very, very deeply. And it, so it's changed the landscape of the mediumship I do because I know when a soul comes to me and it, and it shows up in the clients that I have too. When I have somebody that comes to me, the session is definitely about connecting to the other side, but it's equally about now that you know all this, now what are you going to do? Are you going to live differently? Are you going to, is this going to inform you to make different choices? So it's an extraordinary spiritual intervention. Hmm. It can be. It isn't, I mean, I can't say every single session is like that, but I mean, the opportunity to present itself to be a better human being mm. is imperative. It's imperative. Mm. You know, wow, that's such an important part that you're speaking about because of the information that you're getting. Like you said, the regrets and all the, would you say the word conflict that, you know, that the folks on the other Listen. side are kind of... Yeah, loose ends or unfinished business. It's it's just it's what we just are nonchalant and think we have all the time in the world. To yeah, do. yeah. So the, the message then really is for those that are here living, right? The, those of us here that yeah. say, okay, we have the opportunity. We're still here. We have the opportunity to kind of work on these things. Or as you said, right? It's it's the choice, knowing that it does come through, or we we carry that with us um, when we go to the other side. Yeah, we do. And it's, 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 that's, that's again, what had to change in me was once I, cause I, cause I had to ask a different, I get the fact they're talking. Yeah. 
They've been talk talking for a while, asking questions. Did you die? What's your social security? I, that, that was not a fair thing to say. That was not a fair thing to say. That is the evidential part of mediumship, which is validating the fact that the soul is, is truly the soul by bringing through evidence and information. Mm -hmm. But as somebody that was within the field and working in the field with the depth that I have been, I just had to ask that bigger question, like, why are they talking so much? What is the bigger piece? And that's where it led me to the whole cell, cell soul evolution mm. and to the need for us to look at ourselves as a, a work in progress always. Mm -hmm. And then once you realize how beautifully human you are, then you have much more compassionate eyes to embrace your brothers and sisters because you realize they're just doing the best job they can. They're not trying to irritate you. They mm -hmm. just maybe have a really bad day. So cut some people some slack, yeah. you know? Yeah. Really puts things in perspective, right? That we're all just yeah. doing the best that we can. Yeah. Wow. This is so great. You know, let me just take a second here. We have a number of people. We have Chris from Massachusetts and we have Linda from Chicago and Nancy from Castleton, New York and uh, Delana from, is that Hawaii? Oh, California, sorry, Carmel, California and Mary from Thank Oregon you. and Marcy from Swampscott here in Massachusetts and then Cynthia from Arizona, great. So I know that there's a lot more folks here in the room um, so feel free to type in where you're listening from and please engage, you know, um, Austin has just shared some really powerful stuff with us that, you know, other, that, that has a little bit, you know, this whole soul piece and this whole soul evolution piece around the fact that because of the information that she's hearing and getting, um, it's really informing and helping us to be able to live a life here to, you know, we have choices. And so I think that's really powerful information that we not necessarily get when, you know, just any old medium that wants to provide evidential information that your loved one has passed. Of course, that's important. But I think what Austin is speaking about really broadens things out a little bit. So would love to hear some questions, some comments. How is this landing for people? Um, so just go ahead and type in um, the chat and, you know, engage with us in the conversation here. So this is great, great. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I have, there are so many different kinds of mediums and I cannot say how imperative it is for people to, for instance, the mediums that are partaking in the Afterlife Awareness Conference. Um, Suzanne Northrup and I have uh, become really good friends. She is one of the people that really set the foundation for the rest of us to be able to work. She's phenomenal at what she does. She has a very traditional um, spiritualist background where she would sit in spirit circles and has just worked her craft. And I respect mm. and just love her integrity. Thomas John, I had the opportunity of witnessing and, and seeing in a small group here in Los Angeles. He is an absolutely phenomenal evidential medium. Uh, the amount of knowledge that came from him was really I, I I was jaw my jaw was dropping, mm -hmm. and I believe there needs to be such an appreciation for the really strong evidential mediums because that does the the main purpose of mediumship when it was birthed out of the spiritualist movement in the modern spiritualist wave in the United States was was 1848. Mm -hmm. It was really about proving the afterlife mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm they do it beautifully. So what I'm talking about is a comb is is adi in addition to the work of mediumship and I just want to say that because I have so much respect mm -hmm. for the w the men and women that do that are in my field. Mm. Huge. That's great. that's great. You know, and it's so beautiful that you bring the additional piece and can really merge the two together. We have a great question from Linda um, that I was thinking about also is she says how do we find a good medium? You know, maybe what, what do you look for when you're kind of searching out for a medium? What's important? First of all, since your loved ones are driving the connection, 
So think of it that way. I think we think to be, we're the ones that choose. Right. Trust the fact your loved ones are 100% behind you getting the right medium. And a lot of times why it might, the association or the meeting is off base is when we haven't trusted our instincts. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what I would do, because it's me, is I would say, I would ask my loved ones, help me find the right medium to represent you. Because mm. really my client isn't the person sitting across from me. My client's the, the person in the spirit world who needs me to represent them well. Right. That'd be the first thing I'd do. Secondly, I would really take a moment. Um, word of mouth is a great way to know about a medium. If they're hot and everybody's talking about them and they're doing something showy, that's good. But I think personal reference speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Then I would take a moment to go to their website and see if the energy and the way that they talk about the work speaks to your level of desired integrity. If it feels approachable or if you want it to be more business-like, there's you'll get that hopefully from the essence of their website. And if those things make sense, um, I never have a problem if someone wants to interview me a little bit and ask me about my background. There should be something on the site that will tell you about their schooling. And I would hope that they've schooled maybe. There's natural mediums, but it the work... The work needs to be molded. It really does. So, and then if it feels right, ask for signs from your loved ones. Mm. Unless mm. you get an immediate take like, yeah, let's jump in. But involve your loved ones on it because I can, the synchronicities that happen in this room from people who are from the same place I'm from or they show me a vacation place that my parents went to that they went to so I can talk about the bar that was by the pool. It's amazing. Mm. So it's an infinite intelligence that we're dealing with, which is a lot bigger than ours. <laughs> yeah. What a what a fantastic point! Because you're right. I mean, how how many times are we just like this is it? You know, this human experience, and it's so much bigger than this. Um, but two yeah. points that you know I, I really want to highlight from what you just said because I think they're really important. Speaking about intuition, right? Go with your gut. Really trust what, you know, ask the question to your loved ones to be guided. Trust your instincts and your gut going and looking at someone's website and really is it resonating with you. And also another huge piece, I think, you know, and, and I just find this from even the work I'm doing too, is you mentioned the schooling, right? In some type of credentialing or uh, more formal training because, you know, as we know, you can go on the internet, right? And within a weekend, all of a sudden you have some quote certification and you're hanging out a shingle or a sign that says, I'm a X, fill in the blank. And it just such, does such a disservice to, you know, the integrity of, in this case, as we're speaking about medium. So I think that that's huge to, to really encourage people to make sure that there's, is there a, a board of mediums, a, a national kind of organization, or is it just kind of the credentialed schools that are out there? There isn't. However, there are some things you can look for. Um, yes, there are plenty of places where someone can become a medium over the weekend. Um, I, yeah. again, I can only, it, this is always dicey area for me because again, I have so much respect for the people that work yeah. within my field. Yeah. There are a lot of people, it gets really exciting and I understand the people that are just stepping into it. Gosh, you get so excited. You're making these contacts and you really want to help people and you want to go like full board right away and jump into it and be a professional. I think I'm part of a board, and this cracked me up, but this is so Terry. So Terry Daniel from the Afterlife Conference. She created a board and put me as the head of it, which I was just like, oh, my God, I love you. Yeah. Of ethics and integrity for light workers. And I was like, oh, my God, because she appreciates the level at which I try to mirror what feels important to me. I became a grief counselor because, and most, I, I don't really know if many mediums are, but I became one because I realized I had to deal with death. I didn't know, I knew about a couple of different kinds of death. I'd gone through one experience, my two experience, well, more than that, but not enough to have such a wide birth of experience, let alone 
the knowledge of how to navigate someone through complicated grief, which is when they've experienced numerous people dying around them at a certain particular time, or know when to refer out. Because God loved the spirit world, hmm. but it's not always the answer for people. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. isn't. And sometimes if they become, and I know this is a passion piece of Terry's too, if they become too dependent upon a medium, their own soul progress is halted and their grief is suspended. Mm -hmm. And that's really dangerous yeah. because unless that medium has incredible integrity, if they say the wrong thing, that person, like if they represent, it's, it's more, it's such a big subject, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But if you have, a parent that's lost a child, they oftentimes are and siblings that have lost. It's just when it's a loss that just shouldn't, just shouldn't happen. Those people, their grief, I, I have so much respect for those human beings in this world. It's extraordinary what they go through. Mm -hmm. But unless you know how to lovingly walk them through that and help empower them, you can't fix them, but help mm -hmm. empower them. It's just, I just don't know if it, I think you need the training for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many pieces to this, right? Because you're right. It's just oh. not about bringing you know, a loved one through from the other side. I mean, there's so much happening no. right here with the individual in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm also, I'm also, you're asking such beautiful questions. I'm, I'm noticing my answers are not short and pat and I'm trying to figure out how do I condense this? And it's like, but it's a big topic. Yeah, it's you big. Know? It's huge. No, and I think this is great. I appreciate the fact, I appreciate the fact that you're asking the questions and then really to more specifically ask about the education part of it, just as a side note. And again, I have no interest in I'm not trying to toot my own horn at all. It's really because I'm so darn passionate about being a medium. I spent more money on this part of my education than I did going to UCLA. Wow. Wow. Well, and I will continue to do so because I don't believe I ever get to a point where I know everything. Sure. Sure. Which, you know, I mean, I, I feel similarly in terms of, you know, with someone with a strong integrity and ethics, I think that it's continual learning. You know, if we get to a point to say, hey, I know it all or, you know, then I tend to say, okay, what's kind of going on here? So, you know, I appreciate your honesty to say, you know what, and it is, you ought to toot your horn because I think that, you know, you bring something to the profession that because we hear so many stories of, yeah. Of, of folks that are not in integrity and it can be very hurtful and harmful to others. So, you know, those of you that are, you know, really in integrity with things, I think is, is huge. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I liken it to doctors. Yeah. Doctors yeah. have CMEs, which are continuing med needs yes. for units of continuing medical education. So mm -hmm. they, which have, they have a big job and there's constantly more information and they constantly have to be smarter and updated. Any profession, I believe, has the same yes. requirement, really, if it's something that you love and you're passionate about. You want to be the best that you can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. We're getting some more great questions and comments. Let me just jump over here. So Marcy says, a medium that she worked with shared information from family who have passed that really helped her understand why things happened the way that they did. Okay. Um, to forgive and let go of her reacting to the past. It helped, yeah. it helped for her life greatly. It, beautiful, I mean, I think that's what you're speaking of, right? Of that, you know, the information, now we have the opportunity to make changes here in our life now. So thank you, Marcy, for that. Yeah. Marcy, if just to add on that, um, first of all, thank you for honoring that part of the session because if there's a reason why the spirit world is touching in, yes, it's to send you love and to let you know that, you know, you're a phenomenal soul and that they were, you were important to them as much as they were important to you. But the curative part to then implement it into your own work and realize that, that they're actually asking you to keep expanding and growing is amazing. The other thing I would say is if, since you had such an amazing experience with that medium, would you write them some sort of thank you? Because we're always, 
it's helpful for us to have a really personal statement and that could be something they could post on their website. They wouldn't have to use your name, but it would be really nice. So if there was that much of an impact, at least let the medium know because I can't tell you how many times we never know how it goes afterward. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice to know. Great, great suggestion. Yeah. L Linda's asking, how much should the medium charge? Boy, that's a... I don't even know if I can field that one. Mm. Um, it depends. Uh, there is a swing a mile long on that one. Um, I have, I've changed my prices as my education has expanded okay. because mm -hmm. I wanted to honor the fact that I had invested in what I did. And I also reached a point within my own evolution through speaking at conferences and doing other things that I felt I could charge what I was asking. However, I w got to one level and it felt uncomfortable to me, so I lowered it actually, and I've stayed at that place ever since. However, I have people that I know that charge $500, $1,000 more, and that fits, that works for their integrity and it makes them comfortable and that seems to m work for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that diplomatic enough? <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. And I think, you know, again, it's about, you know, the value, you know, the individual that's coming to, you know, how does that land with them? You know, is there, you know, I, I think it's, again, it's the intuitive piece of, you know, does this feel right? Does this resonate? Am I looking at someone's website and going, oh, whoa, I would never pay that. Or, okay, wow, I see there's real value. They have a lot of education and they really are bringing a lot to the table. So yeah, they're worth what they're charging. So again, I think it, you know, it also goes back to, you know, the individual needs to make the decision because I would imagine there is a gamut, you know, in terms of prices. So. I would also, if their prices are high for you when you're looking at prices, if their education or if the amount of time they've been doing the work does not seem to match, I also mm -hmm. know mediums that think that they're ready to charge a lot of money because that they'll go to somebody's website that they think they are equal to, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll say, well, they're charging this, so I'm going to charge this. Um, again, that intuitive piece, as you said, yeah. Kim, absolutely yeah. just listen to that because there's nothing worse than have, it should be an investment. We'll yeah. just leave it at that. It should be an yeah. investment for yeah. your soul. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For your soul. I love it. Yeah. Nancy has a great question. Are there times when you cannot connect? Do you tell the client that the past, that the soul that's passed is not connecting? Um, if a medium doesn't do that, that would make me nervous. Um, fortunately, I'm really, really lucky. I've been doing this work. Oh, well, I've been doing the intuitive work since my 20s, and then I've been doing the mediumship probably 15 years, something like that. Mm. Within that time period, there's been about four people that I was unable to read. Okay. Um, one woman was early in my career. She wanted to talk to her child that was never born that died in her womb, and I just didn't know where to access that information. Mm -hmm. And that's not to justify it. It's just that sometimes people want to talk there, and it it's an evolution because – you know, it's an evolution as a medium to know where and where you're looking. But with the people I could not connect, I did my best to do so. Most of the time, it was still a full-length session, but I refunded them their money completely. Because mm -hmm. if I don't feel that I have done my work, then I am not going to charge the person that I'm reading for. But it's a very rare occasion because I'm just blessed. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think a part two of that for me that comes up is, you know, I think you said in the beginning too, it's I may want to come to you as the medium and I have a specific individual I want to come through. But if they on the other side are, you know, someone else could come through. So I think it's the whole piece of wanting, 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 but it's it's not really us, right? It's it's whoever the soul on the other side you know, comes through through you to, to provide information. Would you, does that happen frequently that people come with such a strong, I want, you know, my mother and maybe, you know, some other one comes through? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> one of the things I have learned, and this, to, this 
you know, is one of those things as a medium that you figure out because you tank enough to re you get into those uncomfortable <laughs> situations and you're like, note to self, um, was I realized that it was important for me to educate people about the mediumship process as much as represent their loving their loved ones in the spirit world. The spirit world knows why you're there. You may think you know why you're there, uh -huh. but the spirit world really knows why you're there. It's an opportunity for them to do a spiritual intervention with you. So they're gonna use it as a moment to do a whole bunch of things. What ends up happening is if we do not relinquish our or extend our free will and no, if we don't, yeah, if we don't surrender to that possibility, we then try to steer the reading. And that oftentimes comes to when people are just terrified of what they're about to experience. They'll try mm -hmm. to control me. And it's a completely normal human response that you just learn how to lovingly work with. But there also have been time periods where people have come through and the person doesn't even want to talk to them. Ah. They're like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk to them. I, I have nothing to say to that individual. Now, I know the spirit world is creating an opportunity. The spirit world does not come in to antagonize. The spirit world does not come in to condone. They're not going to give, they're not going to terrify you, make you, they're, they're only going to elevate your energy. And if a medium brings through information that either makes you afraid of your life or they're representing someone is still being like a brat and they're terrible and they're saying this to you and it's injuring you further, that medium is not accessing the spirit world. They might be connecting with you psychically and picking up what the relationship was there but they're not connecting with a divine intelligence that comes from a more hi a higher vibration and from a source of love mm. so, so if somebody cool. comes to me and they only want to talk to one person um i just i just say please leave any agenda you have outside of the door mm. because mm. Otherwise, you're not going to hear a single thing that I say, even though I record the session, you're not going to hear it. And it also goes when people are like, well, if they don't mention this, this, and this, it's not real. Mm. Yeah, again, what about, nice. what about, and I, I think where people aren't even thinking, what about your poor grandmother on the other side that is just so excited to talk to you and you've given her three things she can say? Yeah. What if she suddenly realized that you're a lot like her and she wants to comment about that? Well, I don't want to hear that because it's not one of the things I had on my list. It's just such a sadness because there's so many opportunities that can happen, you know, that people yeah. just overlook. Yeah. So. Yeah. I can imagine the frustration because, you know, it's, again, it's us wanting to control and, and, and we're yeah. not in the control. It's not about us. It's about our loved ones being able to kind of give messages. Yes. Well, and Kim, you experience that with people that are in the dying process, people that are dealing with death. I mean, anytime, right. anytime we touch upon this particular subject, right. we are dealing with an unknown and we are not great in that space at all. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, I mean, also we need to cut ourselves some slack as well as, you know, be yeah. clear about what's happening. So. so there's a question here from Delana. Delana, I hope I'm pronouncing your name Delana, correctly. She, Delana. Hi, Delana. Oh, okay, Delana. <laughs> She's a sweet friend of mine from Carmel and also a, uh -huh. um, a, um, an up-and-coming medium herself. She's doing amazing work. Oh, so. great, Delana. Yeah. Great. So yeah. she asked, do you feel that the soul work comes through in a reading more through clairsentience? The choked up feelings, the strong emotions that's felt, does it get in the way or is it the way to best touch the truth of the message? Mm. See, this is why I love her. Yes. She's always asked, she and I have worked together a little bit. Um, she asks the most soul pulsed, and can you feel how passionate she is about yes. being a medium by the yes. question? Um, when I was, I, I had a, a bit of a, a, a background in performing. And one of the notes I always got as an actor was I had too much visible emotion that I was supposed to hide it. I wasn't supposed to feel anything. And, you know, I'm... I, I my it my heart isn't on my sleeve it's like on my face so it's like really visible and I believe that if I make an agreement with the spirit world that when they connect to me 
whatever emotion they didn't get a chance to express, if they needed to flow through me, I'm absolutely fine with that. They're not debilitating my body. They're not taking over. They're not possessing me. They are merely having a physical form to be able to recreate an opportunity that they missed. I believe, Delana, that it comes in so many different ways. Um, because the scent, the way that the words might come in might be exactly the right pitch and modulation. Um, I feel that in those moments when it is soul to soul and you know that you're representing the fullness of them, I think allowing all of your senses to mirror that soul as best mm -hmm. as possible, you literally are blending so profoundly that you can almost not be yourself and be more of them. And those moments to me are just spectacular. Mm. You'll almost feel, it's it's fascinating, Kim, you'll almost feel like you have a mustache or you've got chest hair. I don't, by the way. Um, <laughs> but you'll be blending so much with a yeah. soul that you'll really have a sense of them needing to be so connected to the individual and create recreating a moment that they miss, that it's just, it's spectacular. So Delana, I hope that that answered mm, that. So mm. it's clairsentient, but it's, it's like a mix of everything. Yeah. That yeah. is, wow. This has just been amazing. I mean, just me personally, this is just so wonderful to just hear the, I don't even know the words, Austin, but it's just so beautiful because it just goes beyond, you know, I'm just going to a medium to get a reading, to get evidential information that, you know, my loved one has passed. I mean, it's so rich and there's just such an opportunity here for, for us to just, and then I see now why you use the word soul gardener, you know, to really just... I mean, what is a gardener, you know, to really just nurture and just water and feed and just allow the growth of our own soul here while we're still in the physical form. This is just And so also beautiful. have that awareness that yeah. the seasons of our soul are necessary because if you don't yes. have winter and you don't have that time where the seeds, there's a turnover. Um, yes. It doesn't allow for the abundance of spring. And I know it sounds kind of corny an analogy, but it fits so perfectly because it's important that we have this, that all of the different moments that we have. But how we handle it, if we allow the moment to not be one of service to us, that it's happening to us, we completely victimize ourselves in a situation. And the opportunity or the gift in the moment is to empower yourself by understanding no matter what it looks like, it's being given to me. I chose, and then even further, yeah. I chose, chose this moment on a soul level. I chose this experience or my choices have brought me to this exact perfect moment right now. So if that's the case, this is an amazing opportunity opportunity for me to expand into this, to finish this pattern, to find out why this keeps showing up in my life mm -hmm. instead of going, oh, bitch, moan, bitch, moan, bitch, moan, bitch, moan, you know, right, which right. we do because we do. Yeah, so Yeah, yeah. That whole victim mentality that I have no power and that it's just done to me. <sighs> and you're speaking about that is actually not the case. We have chosen yeah. this. And if we pay attention to whatever the lesson is to learn, well, we can continue to move or will we re will we incarnate again needing to continue to learn the lessons well and on the level of that see this is this is where the work is so fun but it's like just a conversation that just goes on yes um the cool one of one of the things that the work has shown me is how incredibly connected all of our learning is too and how if we let's say a certain pattern like alcoholism runs in the family Mm -hmm. And let's say it's been in the generations for two or three generations, and this probably speaks to someone that's in the room, so that might be why it's being mentioned. Anyway, if there is someone within this generation that takes on alcoholism, that surmounts it and starts assisting and being of service to other people that are walking through it, mm -hmm. if there is one mind that gets turned, it shifts the karma not only of the future, but it shifts the karma of the past. So the soul group doesn't have to walk that line anymore. Wow. We are so incredibly important in the things that we choose to embrace about ourselves that we can't forget for a moment. We're, 
our potential for healing and for helping all, all of humanity, not only our ancestors, is in every single moment. It just depends on how conscious we wish to be when we're living. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is a powerful statement that you just said. Yeah. Right? It really can change the, the karma of the soul group. Wow. Mm. So of the past and the future, based on what we do yeah. here. Well, if that well, doesn't wake us up. People, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> because I think most people can understand, you know, if I do this, it changes tomorrow. But when you're dealing with the soul and you're dealing with the quantum universe and you're dealing with, so here we see everything is disconnected and separate in 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 the the world of the spirit it's a quantum universe so everything is connected so yeah. of course and also time and space are completely different because there are more dimensions within it so we have very little understanding of the impact that we have but again i think it's another layer of why the spirit world is talking because they're trying to help you understand you can help them you can either complain about them and walk around like you just got beaten up, or you can say, maybe they didn't understand that they were powerful. Maybe they didn't understand they had a choice, or maybe they didn't have a choice, but I do. Mm. Mm. Wow. This is powerful, powerful work that you're doing. Yeah. Well. Wow. We're all doing powerful work. I just happen to be really passionate about mine. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, and you know, and I love that, you know, you're you're creating an invitation, right? By this work that you're doing, you're creating an invitation to all of us to really be more aware, be more conscious, and to really understand or begin to understand that there is more than just this physical universe here. You know, the whole quantum uh, yeah, it's not a three, it's not a um, time and space are not like they, it is here in this three-dimensional world. And so it's an invitation mm -hmm. to say, wow, you know, I have the opportunity here. I have an invitation here. And what do I choose to do? Which just blends so beautifully for some of the other work that I do in addition to the death and dying work. But it is about that because it takes, so you know, it gives us our power back to say, how do I want to show up? How do I want to make an impact? And as opposed to kind of the victim mentality and the moaning and groaning and the blaming. And, you know, if we really realize, okay, this is, this is a situation or these are things that we have the ability to make different choices. That's really empowering. Yeah. Yeah. And even in the dying process, because yes. so in the shamanic studies I did, one of the offshoots of it was dying consciously. Uh -huh. And I worked to be able to teach and facilitate those classes. Um, and what I loved about it, and it really harkens back to Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and to, you know, the work that was when people finally said, again, there is an opportunity here. We have to look at this person not as somebody that's dying, but as an individual and a soul that's going through the next transition. Um, there's opportunities within that capture, not only for healing within the people that are going to be left once that soul has has died or not the soul has died but once you know once they transition into mm -hmm. the spirit world mm -hmm. um there's also huge opportunities for that soul too in the dying process to be empowered through death because it is really one of the few things we all have in common right so if, if you're aware of it and you know that that's something that's going to happen i think we all have a trajectory oh well that's going to happen when that's really not how the universe works so there's so much that you can do to empower yourself with the concept that leaving a whole bunch of stuff behind is probably not too helpful for the people that are here because they're going to be devastated enough hopefully that you've died you know they're going to be really overwhelmed that then if they've got a whole bunch of stuff on top of that mm -hmm. It's just, it's just mindfulness about the space you take up too. Yes, I love that. Mindfulness of the space that you take up. That is so great. I should retweet that. <laughs> I will afterwards. <laughs> this will. is great. You can. This is great. You can. So well, can and you... I love the fact that you're working as a coach, you know, and doing, doing the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. I really am so grateful for it because to have a mindfulness and a, a positive I mean, that's, that's Terry, Terry Daniels, the Afterlife Awareness Conference, the whole pulse of that. God love her being a mother that, you know, her son died way before he should have died. Right. But she it was really came from the fact that 
she wanted to more deeply understand things, but put dignity to things. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and to, to, to make it a grander exploration than just waiting until that moment when it happens and, oh, crap, now it's here. I've got to figure this out. Right. It needs to be something that's embraced as just another portal through which we move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to have friendly and loving faces and people that are articulate and caring and compassionate during a time period like that and completely understanding of the fact that it's probably not going to be your best day. Right. is extraordinary. So mm -hmm. there's so many people in that, that industry that I think are just amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, great. Speaking of the Afterlife Conference, so you're going to be, what is this, your third year? Um, it's the, I think it's the third time I've done the conference. Third time. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So what are you going to be yeah. doing? You're going to be teaching and doing also mediumship readings. What do you talk to us about what you're going to be doing at the conference? Um, it's fun this year. So um, I have taught mediumship before to people who aren't mediums, just parents that want to connect with their kids or, you know, any anybody really has the propensity to be able to be aware of the spirit world. This year, um, and it's somewhat correlating with other work that I'm doing, um, I'm teaching a class called The Quintessential Soul because mm -hmm. I wanted to really look at this spiritual nature of ours from a whole bunch of different perspectives. So I've studied hypnosis and path life regression, and I've studied, as I said, shamanism, and I've looked into remote viewing, and all of them gave me different puzzle pieces and different ways that I could jump into the ethers of time. So I'm teaching a pre-conference class that will be the quintessential soul, and we'll just be spending four hours just mm -hmm. diving in deep. It's gonna be fun. Then on Friday, um, and that would be May 3rd, 13th, I believe. Um, I'm sitting on a board with uh, Tom, John, and Suzanne, and I'm leading um, uh, the ethics in the the world of the light worker, which is going to be a good one. And then during that weekend, while I'm in St. Louis, I will be um, seeing clients. I think I'm pretty much booked up right now, but. Mm -hmm. um, and then just attending the conference too and listening to all these amazing people that have been collected. That's fantastic. Yeah, and for, for those of you that weren't on the last um, webinar, um, the Afterlife Conference where shamans and scientists and mediums and MDs, you know, all come together and Terry has really put together a wonderful uh, array of, of speakers, of keynotes, of presenters, of mediums. Um, so I think it's gonna be fantastic. And if I were not moving, out of Massachusetts, I would be there. So I've already told Terry, next year it'll be in Portland, Oregon. And I said, I will be there because I just think it's a phenomenal opportunity yeah. for people. So if anyone is interested in it, um, please go to the afterlifeconference.com and you can get more information there. Um, and I know that uh, you can meet Austin there. So that would be great as well. <laughs> so, all right, let's see if there's any more comments or questions. Delana has, will any or all of the AFLC be streamed or available to those who cannot attend? Oh, the Afterlife Conference will be streamed. Do you know, Austin? Hmm. She did last year. Um, yes, actually, I believe she is doing that because there okay. was some paperwork about, can we show your face? Okay, okay. <laughs> so yes, so yes, then. I believe it will. Great, great, so excellent. I believe it will. Yeah. All right. And also, just as something else, I want to just mention, I'm, I'm participating in a, a conference that I'm after the Afterlife Awareness Conference that I'm really excited about. And it's the Robert, Bren, Robert Brown and Friends Spiritual Retreat in Virginia Beach at the ARE. And mm -hmm. if people don't know what the ARE is, it's the Association of Research and Enlightenment, which was Edgar Casey's creation. Edgar mm -hmm. Casey was probably one of the most amazing, they called him the sleeping prophet because he would bring through information. He would go into a sleep with a person's name and come out of the sleep with medical information and soul information about them. And uh, it, the amount of people that he, and cases that he covered in his lifetime is phenomenal. Um, so Robert Brown is an English medium who's really wonderful. AJ Barrera is another really great friend of mine from LA. And then um, Kevin Didashi from the ARE is also going to be presenting. But it's going to be a really lovely week where 
people that are interested in developing their skills can show up, but also we have kind of uh, people that are being drawn to it that are working through their grief or are just fascinated with the topic of mediumship. Mm -hmm. So um, that's on my website, which is austinwells.com, and that's A-U-S-T. I think it's down there. It's down there somewhere. Down there, um, yes. It's yes. down there, right there. Yes. Um, so you can see that there. Yes, great. I was going to ask you how people can get more information. Yes, austinwells.com. So go to her website, and there's tons of information. And this is, um, you know, as we're approaching the top of the hour, I know we're getting some thank yous. Um, such a wonderful Aww. session. Thank you, Marcy, for being here. Um, uh, Delana says thank you. So, yes, we're thrilled to have everyone join us tonight. This has been great, great uh, comments and questions. I think, you know, we probably could, Chris says thanks. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, we probably could go on and on. And But as we're at the top of the hour, let me just give last words to you before I, I close it up, Austin. So parting words for, for our audience. I think the spirit world's talking to us for a reason. I think we have a right if we really want the world to change that it has to start with looking at ourselves and being willing to be the best version of ourselves that we can be mm -hmm. so empower yourself to find out who you are and why you're here because what if it is a choice what if what if you chose all this and wouldn't it be mm -hmm. fascinating to find out how that story goes so um it's a delight kim thank you so much for having me as a guest and for allowing me to share what i'm so passionate about with uh, your listeners and and community so great well thank you it's just been a delight and your passion just uh, oozes out and i just love that so um and yeah. and terry says great talk love you austin so Aww. you know I people you, are just terry. loving this so so again yeah. just thank you to austin and thank you to everyone for for showing up tonight and again you'll all get the replay so if you're here live with us you'll get the replay as well and if you're tuning into the replay um we hope that you have enjoyed this session and um as i mentioned i am moving uh from boston to baltimore and so in may in a, two weeks <laughs> so i will not be doing a webinar in may but june the 9th will be the next one and that will be with rachel zeldin from i'm sorry to hear and she has a website full of information online about funeral homes questions and state by state information and so we'll be talking about kind of she i, I consider her like the consumer report for funeral homes on how to <laughs> kind of really get your questions answered um and know what you're walking into if you choose to go via a funeral home for a, a death of a loved one um or if, if yourself if you're considering it um pre-planning and those types of things all kinds of questions and things on how not to get taken at such a vulnerable time so tune in for that everyone will get the uh the link for that and if you're interested you can sign up but again i'll be taking may off and i'll eager to see all of you in june as always any questions or comments or anything i can support you with um, at kim at your end of life and um again just thank you all we're getting some great thank yous from nancy thank you for the chat great information uh, Jacqueline's looking for the replay. I know you came a little late, Jacqueline, so you'll get everything. But again, thank you so much. And uh, again, to Austin, and we will, I will see you all in uh, about six weeks. Take care, everyone, and have a great evening. Bye-bye.